Hey there! Welcome to part 7 of the Hilda character series. Today, we're going to learn how to rig the eyes for blinking and adjust the size of the pupils with smart bone actions. Let's dive right in. Alright, let's start with the Hilda group. I stay on this group and select the pin bone placed at the outer corner of the left eye using the select bone tool. Now, I grab the add bone tool, hold down the shift key, and draw a new bone from that pin bone towards the right, just like this. I color this bone green and name it left lid sharpness. Next, I go to the bone constraints tab. I enable the constraints and set the movement range of this bone from minus 70 to zero. Then, I set the bone strength of this bone to zero as well. While this bone is still selected and I'm still on the Hilda group, I open the actions panel. Here, I click the new action icon, confirm the pop-up window, and enter the timeline of the action. Now let's go to frame 72. Using the transform bone tool, I move the bone to its maximum position, all the way to the right. Next, I use the layer selector tool and click on the eye outline layer to switch to it. Then, I select the corner points of the eye using the select points tool, holding shift as I go. After that, I grab the curvature tool and set the curvature of those points to zero. This will make the eye corners look sharp. Now, I use the layer selector tool again to go to the eye fill layer. Just like before, I select the corner points and set their curvature to zero as well. Finally, I double click on main line in the actions panel to exit the action timeline. All done for the left eye, now just repeat the same steps for the right eye. Take your time and do each step carefully. Now, let's go back to the Hilda group. Using the select bone tool, I click on the middle pin bone of the lower eyelid. Then I switch to the add bone tool and draw a new bone downward from that pin bone. I color it green and name it left lower lid sharpness. Next, I set the bone strength of this bone to zero. Then I open the bone constraints tab, enable angle constraints and set the angle range from zero to 70. While this bone is still selected, and I'm still on the Hilda group, I go to the Actions panel. I click the new Action icon, confirm the pop-up, and enter the Action timeline. Now, I go to frame 72. Using the Transform Bone tool, I rotate the bone to its maximum limit. Next, I grab the Layer Selector tool, and click on the lower lid outline layer to switch to it. Then, I select all the lower lid points using the Select Points tool, holding Downshift. I switch to the Curvature tool and set the curvature of those points to zero, making the eyelid corner sharp. Now I go to the Eye Fill layer, select the corresponding lower eyelid points and set their curvature to zero as well. Then, I switch to the Upper Eye Outline layer. Here, I find the two points that belong to the lower lid section, select them and set their curvature to zero. Finally, I double-click main line in the Actions panel to exit the Action Timeline. Done! Now just repeat the same steps for the right eye. Make sure to do each step carefully.
I stand on the Hilda group, without selecting any bone. I use the Add Bone tool to draw a new bone next to Hilda's head. I set the bone color to green and name it Blink. While the Blink bone is still selected, I go to the Bone menu and click on Make Smart Bone Dial. In the pop-up window that appears, I leave the default settings and click OK. Now I'm inside the timeline of this Smart Bone action. I go to Frame 100, which is the frame where the eye should be fully closed. Using the Transform Bone tool, I adjust the pin bones and smart bones to close the eyes completely. Take your time here and do it carefully for the best result. Then I move to frame 48, which is the middle point of the blink. I set a key frame here and fine tune the eyelid movement to make it smoother and more natural. Now, I double click on the main line in the Actions panel to exit the timeline of the previous Smart Bone action. Then, I use the Manipulate Bones tool to test the movement of the Blink Smart Bone and make sure everything is working correctly. Next, I use the Select Bone tool to select the Blink Smart Bone again. In the Actions panel, I double click on Blink 2 to enter the timeline of this second Smart Bone action. I go to Frame 100 where I want to create a different version of the eye blink. This version will be used when the character is smiling. Using the Transform Bone tool, I adjust the pin bones and smart bones to shape the eyelids in a new way that fits a smiling expression. Do this step carefully and take your time to get the best result.
Now we're going to create a smart bone action for the pupils, so we can control their size, make them smaller or larger. I start by selecting the Hilda group. Then, with the Select Bone tool, I select the left pupil bone. Next, while holding Shift, I use the Add Bone tool to draw a new bone from the center of the left pupil bone, toward the right. I color it green and name it, Left Pupil Small Large. In the Bone Constraints panel, I enable angle constraints for this new bone. I set the limits from minus 70 to 70. I also set the bone strength to zero. While the new smart bone is selected, and I'm still on the Hilda group, I go to the Actions panel and click on the new action icon. I confirm the pop-up window to enter the timeline of this smart bone action. At frame 72, using the Transform Bone tool, I rotate the smart bone to its lowest angle, downward. Then, I grab the tip of the left pupil bone and move it down to make the pupil smaller. I click on the pupil shape using the Layer Selector tool to switch to its layer. Using the Transform Points tool, I adjust the points of the pupil to match the new size and position. Now, I double-click on Main Line to exit the Smart Bone Action Timeline. Then I use Manipulate Bones to test the movement of the Smart Bone. As you can see, the left pupil bone is also moving along with the Smart Bone. To fix this, I select the left pupil bone, go to the Bone Constraints, and under Inverse Kinematics, I check the box, Ignore by IK. Now I select the Smart Bone again with the Select Bone tool. In the Actions panel, I click on New Action, confirm the pop-up, and enter the second Smart Bone action. At frame 72, I rotate the Smart Bone to its maximum angle, upward. Then I grab the tip of the left pupil bone and move it up to make the pupil larger. Next, I switch to the eye layer, and with the Transform Points tool, I adjust the pupil shape to fit properly. Finally, I double-click on Main Line to exit the timeline. I repeat the exact same process for the right pupil, carefully. I use the left pupil smart bone to control the right pupil size too, so both pupils shrink and grow at the same time. After that, I delete the rotation keyframe of the left pupil smart bone from the timeline to bring it back to its default position.
Finally, I connect the Blink Smart Bone to the head bone by parenting it. This way, whenever I move the head bone, the Blink Smart Bone will automatically follow along, keeping everything aligned and working together smoothly. And that's it for part 7. We've rigged the Blink and set up the Pupil Scaling Smart Bones. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit like, leave a comment, and subscribe for more content. See you in the next one, where we'll keep building on the rig.